Hey you, so you're here because you don't want to deal with perusing the C of CMs and C models and just want a more straightforward importing solution by using Sky's convenient port. Additionally, with this method, you don't have to use the respective game's view model arm. Say if you want Black Ops 1 gun, you also need some crusty view model arms from that game. But this way, we can just use the Black Ops 3 view model arms for all games. So I'll be using the arms dealer. Also, before importing anything, make sure to stick with Blender 3.0 branches, not 4.0 and above, since the better Blender COD add-on doesn't support with 4.0 and it seems to have halted updates. At most, this means Blender 3.6.10. I'm using Blender 3.6.9 because... First, we look into this folder for receiver, which will be just the VM version of the gun, with no attachment since we just want the standard SCAR-8. So, in this case, VM underscore IW8 underscore SCAR17S X model underscore bin, in this case. You can tell the FN40GL version is with the 40mm grenade launcher and so on, and such as, say, the TPR is another variant. So, we're just going with that. We're importing the X model with the default settings. Also, make sure it's VM, which stands for view model, and not WM, which stands for world model. That's just a slightly lower poly version. You can still use the WMC models technically, but I mean, we want the highest poly, obviously. When importing the attachment, you can see from the prefix like long barrel instead of barrel indicates the long version of barrel, and DMR stock instead of stock as another example. But we can add these later since they're static attachments. Once we import our attachments since they're static, we can just use a copy transform constraint to attach them. For example, select the stock armature, then copy transform constraint, target eye drop the receiver, and for the bone, here it will be tag underscore stock underscore attach, which is a socket bone system made to allocate where attachments go. So as you can imagine, same thing goes with the barrel, and then here it would be tag barrel attach. Now we don't do this for the magazine. On top of that, we have to make sure that the transformation of this magazine armature is zeroed out, because this will be fixed out once we import XM. Before importing our XAMs, we want to make sure the project is set to 30 FPS. And I'm also conveniently making these categories of collections for the attachments. And here I'm adding my FPS camera setup that I got set to with an FOV of 83.2. And I'll talk about that. Now, what I'm just doing is going to constraints, copy rotation, and adding that constraint to the tag camera bone making sure the mix is add, which I already got. And then I'm adding a video reference as the background image for the camera and making sure that video footage that we got is 30 FPS. Now about that FOV thing about why it's 83.2 exactly. Now if you know anything about model for Call of Duty is that they have a separate view model layer with that set around 83.2 from guesstimating overlaying game footage with Blender and using the same exact gun model and positioning it as such. And then with that the world FOV can actually scale with your in-game FOV so it doesn't distort your view model like how in older Call of Duty when you crank the FOV scale both the view model and world distort in such a manner. Some li might like that look, it just looks weird, so I like to keep it 83.2. But there is a method to just simply have both the view model rendered differently and then the world later. I'm just adding boxes of your liking, I don't know, maybe have pictures of hot dogs? I'm also going to select the mesh of the receiver and then add a mask modifier and then set that to the vertex group that is respective for the sights being on and off, say if you want to attach an optic. So in this case, I'm going to search for sights off and then with that, you can see that now it's hidden and then this in this case, I want the art sights on and vice versa if you want to attach the optic. Let's import our XAMs. First select the arms dealer rig and import the XAM. Let's say reload. Obviously not the X mag version which indicates that's for the extended max one. Default settings again, by the way. And now we do the same for the SCAR H receiver. And remember the magazine bit where we didn't attach it to the SCAR H with a copy transform constraint? Well, we just import the same XM for the magazine and boom, it's correct and it's sitting in the mag well. 
Now theoretically, you can in fact do this for all parts of the gun, and it'll do this thing where it'll correctly place the gun parts. But we use these copy transform constraints so we don't have to do these tedious works of dealing with all these exams for all the parts, since they're static for the most part. Else, you can see why the magazine needs to import exam separately because it obviously isn't static. Also, this means when you work with the animation sequences in the NLA editor, you'd have to work in conjunction now with the animation for the view model arms, the base receiver, and magazine, and any additional parts you decide to import XAM separately. So to save the hassle, you can either merge X models, like how I did with the city model merger, with, well, immediately some tool I haven't researched into yet, or if you're going to replace the gun model anyways, you can use the slightly lower poly world model, which has all the bones and parts pre-attached that's necessary. For example, for my AWP FPS edit, I just used the world model X model of the SPR 208, which did the job, and as such, just had to deal with syncing up XAMs for the view model arms and gun. Now I did a mistake here thinking the barrel was static but in fact it has the bolt which is obviously animated when performing an empty reload. So we can just fix this by deleting the copy constraint transform and importing the same XAM and syncing them up too. You can see how this adds up having to deal with more parts especially if in the end it's just a receiver and magazine that actually requires the XAMs. For example you can see for the AK-47 the receiver has the bolt bone hence why I instinctively thought the barrel was going to be static. Also, I imagine a gun like the Barrett 50 Cal snipers would require importing the XM for the barrel too, considering, well, you know, they're going back and forth when shooting. And just for food for thought. Now let's add more attachment, like say an optic by importing a modifier 2019 optic that has the tag underscore scope or tag underscore holo bone. As you guessed already, you can use a copy transform constraint and let's switch the mask to put the iron sights off and let's import the DMR version of the stock and we can decide to hide the collection when we want. Obviously for extended mags, you'll need to switch to importing extended mag reload and exams respectively. For texture, Sky already generously converted the materials for us so we don't have to use game image util and deal with other miscellaneous texture. Now the following material setup I got is my own interpretation of the textures because well, you'll see very soon. The top mocs texture node is for underscore coal and then for the one below is for underscore spc. Now you'd be wondering why wouldn't you plug the underscore spc into specular? Well from my discovery with dealing with materials for a couple guns, I found that there's bits from underscore spc that would be good that should be combined with underscore coal. Like for example, you can tell if you just directly plug in underscore coal, those metallic highlights from underscore SPC are missing and it's just blacked out. So I just used this color ramp node attached to underscore coal to mask out the blacked out parts for underscore SPC bit. And with both, it looks more in line. I've seen varying levels of how much the underscore coal texture is missing out color bits. So a few times I would have to fiddle with the color ramp based on what looks correct and using in-game screenshots like here you can tell I crank this white level to a certain point before it starts eroding the underscore cold texture. So I found this value to be the best. Alright, with that aside, just import ambient inclusion, then the CMask texture, if there is, and for glossiness and normal, make sure to set the color space to non-color. Now, one more devious thing I did on my own, since there's no metallic texture, I do a makeshift metallic map with this color ramp that's attached to this underscore cold texture, and it'll take the dark parts of the gun and make it metallic. Now, this won't work for bright colored textures, but yeah, there's there's that. And then I just adjust it to my liking, say so I crank that value down. I just do this for materials that have metallic parts to begin with, so just skip this if the material doesn't have metallic parts. Rinse and repeat for all parts. Last thing, some parts don't have the C-mask texture, like with the site. Don't worry, just disconnect that and plug in the glossiness texture directly. Congrats, you got the basic animations down. Now return back to the main tutorial here at this time to get back into the whole FPS edit shabab, which will carry out stuff you can adapt to your X model based rig.